going on everybody welcome back to the next part of this tutorial let me check my mic it's good okay there's a couple of things on my gun I did take a look at I know I said I wasn't gonna do that but I did it anyways that I notice are slightly different than the real thing now or this version here so what I've got going on here is actually correct however these points here actually channel all the way through flat like that in fact even lower it's more like that however if I take a look here this kinda cuts off like that the barrel has a segment here Okay, now the way I'm going to do this is I'm actually going to kind of cheat it. What I mean by a segment is it's like that. It's like a hard edge. Okay, it's pretty, pretty small. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take all these. I'm going to make them planar in the Z. And the reason for Z is because if I do this by local here, you can see actually that uh, if I change this to local, Z is pointing down a length because I haven't reset the X form or anything like that. So when I take these, I need to make them planar in the Z, and that will flatten them out. Okay, that's one minor difference, minor, minor. Um, I also have a channel cut out from the side of the weapon starting about right here. There's a cut right there. Um, there's also a circular uh, like an ovalistic channel cut out of the um, of the barrel here like so. So what I'm going to actually do is I'm just going to cut that off for now. I can always fix that up later. And if I take these faces here and I inset them by a very, very, very slight amount, and what I can do is I can kind of because it's it's roundish like that but I'm gonna need more segments to actually fully accomplish this however given that it's a game and whatnot I don't wanna go all crazy and these bad boys are gone like so okay and looking at it actually I'm gonna pause and grab it stick it on my lap okay the other things that I'm noticing is that starting about here notice I can't get this whole loop without it kinda acting funny uh, and I'm gonna say to here probably lower there is a channel like so and it actually Let's go back that far, which means that this is closer. Whoa, I think I'm on edge. No? Okay, I'm on local. That's a problem. View. Did each vert locally. Okay, and that corresponds with the cutout that's happening on the side here for the uh, the bolt action here to, to move up and down. So I'll have to cut that after I convert her. And again, I'm looking at the gun here. It's in my lap. I'm going to keep it relatively basic. The barrel has a slight taper to it at the end here, and it's just simply not as thick as that I've got going on here. Uh, to be honest with you, the whole thing is not as thick as this is. And looking at it, the barrel, I'd say, is about two-thirds of its length is sticking out the front, which feels about right here. It feels about right. So that doesn't feel weird. Um, that slot here is actually closer to the back. It's more like mm, it's more like that, and then it's got a rail on top of that. Um, this actually feels like it's a little further back. It's probably more like that, but it is definitely closer to the rear than it is the front. And I'm going to go ahead and actually make this just a hair longer. So that feels about right. Um, what I'm going to do also is 
I'm going to take this here and I'm going to ring the whole thing and I'm going to do a minus this point, this edge, and this edge because I'm going to get some seriously nasty lighting artifacts right here when I get this really hyper thin triangle so what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to help alleviate that by running a double connect here Okay, and then if I optimize I can connect that. Let me isolate the barrel only. Okay, and I can connect that there. And what I'll do is I'll go ahead and I'll make all these planar in the Z so they line up clean. Boom. And then I'll take these points and get them close as I can and then do planar in the Z. Again, I'm not worried about the math or nothing. Optimize, just holding control so I can make an actual connection. Alright, now I want to do the same thing here, but before I do that, I'm going to get rid of this edge and that edge, this edge and that edge, because they're going to get in the way. So just backspace those out, and now I'm going to take this minus this, and this minus this, and I'm going to do a single connect. Okay. And I'm going to have to get uh, to do this one side at a time. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to line these up. Now, if I wanted to, I could record my X position here. So it's so a control C, right? And then take all these, make them planar in the Z. Okay. And then immediately repaste that, which I just, you know, was close enough. So again, take this, control C. And then I'll grab all of these. This will be more dramatic. Make them planar in the Z and then paste that again. Okay, and then with optimize I can connect these. And what that's going to do is that's going to help with the lighting because now worst case scenario if I right click to come off of optimize up here and I go to turn edges which always get I lose that whenever I Oops, I got to be on 2 here. That's why uh, turn right here. I want to make sure that none of these are going that way. See how that's really thin, longer triangle? This is a much shorter, fatter triangle. Okay, just want to make sure of that and it's good. Okay, so that's alright. So what I'm going to do real quick, just so it stops looking weird, is... Oops. So I'm going to hit Control A and Auto Smooth. And I should only end up with two smoothing groups and if I select by smoothing group I should have everything but this edge and it looks like that's true and I shouldn't have the front so now the smoothing should look much better if I hit F4 Okay, you can see I don't really have the lighting artifact issue is isolated to right here in this small spot small space there so it's going to be much less noticeable You'd have to be at more specific angles than if I didn't do that to be this big, crazy, long stretch right here. You'd see it; it'd be ugly. Okay, so I'm looking good there. I kind of need to turn on my light because I can't see squat, and I'm just looking at the gun. I'm holding it here. Uh, I don't have the pin in the gun, so there's no um, chance of it shooting me in the belly. I do have the pin right here, and I'm taking a kind of a gander at it and I kinda wanna see how this all lines up because I'm, so I'm gonna put it in there I don't even have any bullets in my room let alone in the gun and okay so that goes there alright <laughs> I know that's what I was saying I didn't want to do this during the uh, during the tutorial because you guys can't see what I'm looking at but I do need to see what's going on anyway just to get a better idea and I think I know now so let's get them together and isolate them. Okay, the barrel doesn't have any thickness yet, but that's all right because I don't need to worry about that. And to be honest with you, the barrel is actually about correct. The only difference is that this right here, this point right here, is a curve. So if I were to like chamfer this, with I pretty much can't. It's, it's more like that, but there would be another point here. Um, this is going to cause issues in terms of the uh, quadding of the mesh, but I can probably get away 
with it, especially if I take this point here and backspace it out. I think what I can do is maybe cut across here. And then what this will actually allow me to do is split this edge here. So if I connect that, and then what I do is optimize it to connect here. Now I can get rid of this point just by backspacing it out. And you can see that now I'm quads. And what this actually lets me do is give myself a little bit more of a round curve there. Now here, my only option is to connect this and optimize across here to keep a quad. Now, sorry about that, the dogs are our A wipes. All right, so what I want to do is take this whole loop here, make sure it's planar in the Z, which I believe it is, and I want to record that X position here. Okay, and then I, what I want to do is grab this is going to be kind of difficult. Let me isolate it by itself just to see where this is all going to line up because it's going to be kind of tricky here to do this. This part's buried in the gun, so I'm going to try this by just by hand so I can do this one at a time like that. Okay, go backwards this way. Okay, and then put that there. And that gives me quads. And you can see that I kind of match how it's shifting over in the same amount there. Because this has to remain planar down the line. This has to be flat. But with this, oops, with this here. Okay. Now, this is curved. This is not curved at like enough to make it look realistic or anything. Neither is this. But if I were to take this, there's nothing really stopping me from connecting it. And then what I can do is actually go by edge here and round this out just a little bit more like so. And now I probably, not by edge anymore, want to pull this not by edge anymore. Like more like that and then these be a little bit more like that uh, that's that's pretty round um, the thing is is I can't take this point here and go this way because then I break that linear s segment that goes down the length so I'm pretty much locked here in terms of its Z and its um, pretty much it's Z and it's Y. I only have any play in the X. Um, there's not a lot I can do about it. To further round this out, I would have to further um, connect these through, which I really don't want to go any further than that. Now the other side, in order for me to um, do the same thing, I can quite easily get this segment to do what I want it to do. That's that's not an issue because I can just take that and pull it. But this one here, if I run this guy all the way down, I'm adding a segment to the end of the barrel too. See? All the way down the end and I'll have this one extra segment down here and that's that's gonna flatten the lighting right here and gonna give me an issue. But, 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 I could cheat, which is one of the things I love to do, and end that prematurely. If I grow this and detach it as an element, now you'll see that this segment terminates there, and it doesn't go any further down here. Okay, and then I can connect that ring. Yeah, I needed one more. Connect like that. 
So I might get a little bit of a flat edge here, but it does allow me to do this. And the fact that these were on separate smoothing groups right here from this edge makes it so that there's going to be no visual difference here whatsoever between me doing between me having it detached or not. That's the thing about like a smoothing group is it's essentially like detaching it to a whole different group of polygons so they don't cross over each other anyway. It doesn't make a difference. Now, I could maybe this is kind of bugging me right here, this off kilter one. Uh, but if I do that, what I can do is I can take the Z position if I want to fix it. Make sure I'm on edge. I'm always on edge. And then paste that. And you can see that flattens it out. It just lengthens my curve a little bit. And again, now it's pretty, pretty clean and simple if I wanted to further smooth this out. But again, I'm going to end up with this point here. Now I could, you know, use this to round it out like that, but I don't want to do that because it's going to be like kind of asymmetrical from its own centered axis, but I can take this and do like that. Now again, I can't get the curve perfect because in order to do that, I'd have to move it up, right? Which puts me back to where I was at anyway. But that's not that much of a change and let's check lighting you will see that you can see it quite quite clearly here and if I actually get rid of it you can see that that lighting artifact is gone so I'm gonna go f for the less less lighting artifacts and go for a less curved portion of the model alright so now I'm not going to, um, and I am not going to give it a shell modifier yet. Okay. There's something I don't like about the handle here. Uh, there's actually not that much. This is, I, I probably should have cut it here before I extruded, but I can kind of cheat and basically what I'll do is I'll take these faces back just a little bit and then take these here and extrude them by nothing so that I can drag it out manually from where I want it to go and that's actually a little bit more accurate than what I had. Now I'm hoping that I didn't miss something there. That's the center point so I should be okay. And let me take these, make sure I get the back ones too. I gotta, I gotta make sure, I'm not looking directly in the back or in the side view or back view or whatever it is. I want to make sure that's okay. Now that's a little bit closer but it's a little like the thickness here kind of matches down here so to be honest these points here are actually helping maintain the curve. It's not bad and what that also means is that they need to be scaled in a little bit including these guys here okay and including this edge here okay I'm gonna isolate because the plane is pissing me off Oops, I already was isolate or already was not isolating. I I hit it twice because I was expecting it to already have been. Okay. Looking at the flow here, it feels okay, I think. And it really does blend a lot smoother here and here. Now, I can't scale this outward unless I swap this to be from the, um, not this one, the, on the rotate tool, 
Oh, is it? No, no, I was on the right one. From here, I gotta swap that to centers. Um, so it's more like that because it's kind of like a clean, smooth, no change in blend. So I'm just gonna back off there just a little bit at the lower parts, and it's it's not like that in the upper parts here. But looking at the original geometry, I'm kind of bulging it out. So the original geometry is going to get a little bit of a treatment. Like that. Okay, that way I get a smooth transition there, but I still get the dip part right here. And that's actually accurate. Um, in reality, however, uh, on the right side of the weapon, this is going to go against the green in terms of like what my brain uh, tells me I should be doing, but it's actually like that. It's pushed over to one side, and it really is like that. I'm not making that up. That is exactly how it is. And then on the other side, to be honest with you, on the other side, uh, here, on the left side of the gun, there is literally no dip whatsoever. The only dip is the guy making it. So I need to pull these out and just push that in on the side. So that was a bit of an oversight. I kind of assumed that that was just like going right down the middle as symmetrical, but it, in reality, no, it ain't. It's it's flat on this side, and the other side has this dip like so. And that has helping define this kind of curve that you get there, and it, it definitely has a curve like that. Now I don't have the geometry to actually fully do that, but I can fix that if I do a sculpt and do the normal maps. I can kind of channel that out. I don't know what in the shies happened here. I gotta fix it. So it is repair job time. I have no idea what went down here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grow this and deselect the faces that I know I don't want to get rid of and I'm gonna delete that okay and that should allow me to very easily bridge them back together okay and that should fix it it does okay that feels better just looking at my gun, I kind of feel like that's a little bit more oops, like uh, that. Because this is like your thumb kind of runs along that. It's like a right-handed gun, you know. It's not like ambidextrous. My pistol is ambidextrous, actually. It's symmetrical both sides. So let me see if I pull these in just a little bit. Yeah, that actually helps it. And it really, like I said, it, it really is, really is like that. So I know it's weird, but it is. Okay, so let's move on to the bolt, Bart, the U-bolt. All right, so um, I need to pause and get like a nice cloth to put this on because if this thing gets dirty, it's bad news. Okay, so now that I have it sitting on a nice clean cloth, let's take these guys and isolate them off of the background here. I'm going to need a new cylinder, so I'll just start one. All right, I'll rotate it. All right, and I will align it pivot to pivot. Okay, that ensures it's going dead down the middle, which is what I want. The height is quite a bit longer. Actually, that's not far. Hang on, I need to pause it. Okay, the height stops just shy of the front here. Okay, so if I 
go to the front view. The height stops pretty much about there. Okay, I'm going to say the radius is actually a little bit thicker than that. It feels about right. Hit P here. Okay, and the rear, okay, I'm just going to go ahead and convert this thing here. The rear lines up pretty much to the back, and then what it does is, let me think, if I click it, yeah, you're simply not going to see that, because if you pull it back, I'm trying to think of what the camera, the player camera is going to see um, as I look at it. Because it's got like this kind of like plastic thing on it. You can take you can take the bolts apart on these things, um, and I I'm not gonna do that because I'm gonna break my gun. Because I'm no I'm not good with that kind of thing. So what I want to do is make that plastic piece, which comes out about there. And what happens is it's actually I'm gonna take grab this ring here and then convert that it's actually only half all right and if I extrude that right you can see it goes all crazy and if I drag it up you can see it kind of comes out straight I don't want that so I can just click right here because it fans out like this and I'm gonna say that it might be more than this but it's about half the diameter. Feels like about there, I guess. <laughs> Feels all right to me, it's pairs. All right, now this, um, the bolt stays a consistent thickness all the way throughout, but this guy gets an extra extension. Now, the one unfortunate thing is that doing this, it's, you notice how I'm not correct here, okay? Um, I'm not flat. So, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to undo that, and I'm going to go back, I'm going to hit 2, and I'm going to hold control to reselect these, and what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to extrude all of them. You can see that gives me flatness here, perfectly flat. All right, and now if I delete that, I can take that loop. Actually, I don't want that loop. What I'll do is I'll do this. I'll take this and this, and I will bridge them. Okay, and I'll take this and this, and I will bridge them. And now let's see if that's going to terminate at the right spot. It looks like it will. And I can't get this guy. But what I can do, if I want to be lazy, is get that half by using the polygon selection and then hold control and just double click. And I should be able to bridge. Okay? And that's what I want. And now, I'm trying to think, what's the best way to do this? This is kind of weird. Yeah, see, that's flat. Okay, so I'm, oops, woo. I'm still safe. It's actually, um,. It's actually flat like that, but I don't want to do that yet. So what I think I'm going to need to do is I need to split this in half here, okay? But it's actually, is it halfway? Yeah, it's exactly halfway, okay. So I'm going to take that, and then I want to take these faces here. Now there's no real quick way to grab these because if I ring it, it's going to get the ones on the other side as well. And now I'm going to look at the back side of this, extrude this, because this comes out, and it actually goes out pretty far, pretty far indeed, but it does a couple of weird things as well. Number one, it scales this way. Number two, it shears. Excuse, sorry. Okay, I gotta find the right axis. It shears this way, but negatively. Like that. That's. Okay, 
Okay, but it's uh, the... I think I'm still on the wrong axis. Let's try it. If it doesn't... whatever axis doesn't work, type in 90 and then try the rest of your axes. Because then usually it's going to work. Um, yep, that's working, and now it's got to go the other way. So it's shearing like that, but it is going pretty straight. So if I look at the top view here, I can go until the anti-aliasing stepping is gone from this. See how that's straight now? And if it's not straight, I get a little bit of stair step. You can see the breaks in the p pixels here. You can get close enough. It's not going to be mathematically accurate. I'm sure, I think if I can zoom in far enough, I might be able to find a break. And there it is right there. But for most of it, it's fine. So that's actually what it's doing. Which seems weird to me. It's but that that's that's what it's that is definitely what the freaking hell it's doing. So all right, whatever. All right, now here's the thing. I need to get rid of these faces here because they're not actually there. Okay, and now this continues in roughly the same fashion. So what I want to do is kind of get these to line up like that. Which I probably should have skewed the whole thing after, but to be honest, at this point, it doesn't make a difference. And now it's closed off. So I'm just going to bridge here and then grab this here and cap it and then what I can do is I can backspace that guy out alright now this what this is gonna do is this is gonna make a very strange type of connection to the rest of my bolt so what I'm actually going to do is detach it so I'm gonna grow this I'm going to isolate the bolt only because I need to I need to see. Actually, you know what the hell with it? I'm just going to get that and that. And let me see if I grow this. What is that going to give me? What's on the back here? There's nothing there. I kind of need to um remake the thing remake the barrel part of it, you know, the, the actual bolt, and keep the plastic piece a completely separate piece. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this, I'm going to detach this. Uh, where the hell is detached? Down here. Okay, detach to an object. Alright, now I can take the barrel, I mean, I, I can we'll keep wanting to call it a barrel, but it ain't a barrel, it's the, it's the bolt. I can just cap that off. Okay. And now I can take this guy, and all of these polygons here I really don't need and I don't need I actually kinda do need these segments otherwise I'm gonna lose any form of quad whatsoever um, yeah it seems really weird that it's like that but it's most sure assuredly is well you know what? Uh, it's it's not actually like that. Let me um go to the top view again. That's coming out straight, but so is this. So here's the thing. I need to get this point to stay where it is, but I need this point to be straight out from here. And in order to do that, I could either scale it and then move it and then guess, or I can change my scale center to be from the center of my view which allows me to move my center and then scale it until that feels straight so it's actually like that that is looking at this from the side yeah that's what it's doing it's really weird but that is definitely what it's doing so alright I mean, I literally held the bolt up to the screen, and that is, that is the shape, so... Okay. Now, like I said, I don't want to have any weird shapes, and this is not exactly cut off flat, but 
to be honest, at this point, I don't, I'm not going to make it all super duper crazy, perfect. I'm not going for manufacturing here. I'm going for basic simplicity. Okay. And they're rounded. All right, that's another thing about this. So, this is chamfered, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the, all these edges and then add this to it. And I'm going to see what chamfer can actually afford me. So I like to right click to get it to zero first and then just tick it up. Okay, I could try more segments. That's, that's pretty good. That's actually pretty close to what I want. Um, even the curve. Actually, I don't want that that edge there so I don't get that. It's, it's a pretty sharp edge there like so. As you can see from the side it looks correct but it does and I know I, I, I keep defending it but it's really you know it does go this way. It's It's got this weird thing and weird stuff weirds me out. Raw out. Okay so let's isolate this piece real quick and here's the thing. I'm actually going to change this. I'm going to get rid of this bridge. I'm going to take this loop here. I think I'm kind of undoing my original mentality here. Um, and I feel like all of these points here need to be coplanar. No. That is exactly incorrect. They do not need to be planar. What needs to be happening here is that these three and these three. I should only have six. I got to make sure of that because I don't don't want to screw that up. Let's look at the top view. What I want to do is have these. Or do I want these to move up? I'm kind of thinking I want these to move up because I already made sure that this was as straight as I wanted. So if I move, if I were to move this to match that, I would break this straightness here. So that's why I just so I did, decided to move this one in. But this is actually pretty flat there. So all right, and now this segment here goes in and I'm going to hit a quick optimize so I can connect that hold shift and just drag from one to the other okay and I'm going to do the same thing here now this is where it's kind of weird but what I'm going to actually do is I'm going to end this right there and like I said it is weird but it, it kind of channels itself inward a little bit. Hmm. I'm trying to think. I'm trying to think. Yeah, I think it's okay. So what I want to do is I want to move this to here, but actually that's not going to be good because if I take this and I move it to here, I'm actually got a very very well. Yeah, I've got a bad connection point here. I've got like a um, two polygons that are well. Basically, I have two volumes that are welded together on their corner. Like, let me try to explain that. It's very, very kind of hard to explain this. But if you have a box, and then you take that box, and you put it, like, right here, corner to corner, and you weld these together, you're going to have a physically impossible shape. Um, especially considering that these points are zero space in the universe. Now, in reality, you could definitely weld two boxes together here, but if in reality they were perfect 90 degree angles where the molecules at that level were 90 degrees, there would be no surface here to actually connect them. It would be too thin. It's infinitely thin, a corner, right? That's why, you know, in every surface, every corner, even a, even the a, a, a scalpel has a thickness, right? Um, at the blade. So you can't really do this. And that's what I'm looking at right here if I do that. So i got to figure out a way to get the geometry to better gel here. 
and really what I'm looking at is having to get rid of this and this and actually this and this okay now I should technically be able to make an okay connection I'm not worried about the distance quite yet so what I need is to take this edge and bring that out it's kinda hard with the uh, near clip I'm gonna bridge that to there and that to there okay now if I take this and I bring one more out I move it forward I'm gonna get I'm gonna get some weird 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 shit going on here but what I wanna do is just get them connected first and then I should this side to there I should be able to insert geometry later nope it's actually to there like that okay and then that I believe will let me do that to there even though that's that's hideous I know it is but I just want the polygons connected it's hideous but it's physically possible okay and that does actually leave me with a conundrum and a triangle um, I'm trying to think maybe there is just a better way to do this you know what there is a better way to do this there's a better way entirely I'm gonna get rid of all this shit because it's not gonna work I'm looking at it right now it ain't gonna work and what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of this. And click and then shift click to get the ring. I'm going to take all of these. Dang it, it didn't go far enough. This is a, a slightly complex piece, I, I, must, I must say. So I'm going to detach this here for now, temporarily, because I need it to not interfere. So now I get this ring and hold control. I'm going to delete those. So now what I can actually do is hit this with a shell, and I want it to be on the inner amount. Now you can see the shell modifier is breaking too. Okay. It really is. It's pretty much not working that well. But if I keep it super thin, it's a little bit better. And then I'll be able to bridge this other piece in by extending this to it. And looking at it, in reality, yeah, and I'll have to extend this for cuz this right here, this surface going across right here is actually like a flat face right here. So, I got to do that after. But I think the shell I'm wondering if I can do that before the shell or is that just like going back to what I already friggin' had? Cuz if I took this and this and go by center here, up oh not that one, this one holding shift see it's flat like that but that's going to give me that in the shell as well and I don't want that so what I'm actually thinking of doing I, you, I apologize everybody for this but you gotta understand that this is how it works like sometimes you get these shapes that are really really weird and you've got to come up with how are they constructed you know like 
how can I put these together? And I'm thinking that I'm going to try and do a hacksaw. Now I am with the triangle here. Not worried about that right now. In fact, I'm not worried about that at all. Um, I bridged the wrong one here. Okay, those two, and then I can get that triangle capped. Okay, and now I can bridge that, bridge that. All right. Now, the idea is, and this ain't going to work perfect either because, actually, you know what, it might. I'm going to take all of these edges. I know I grabbed one in the back, by the way, because I clicked and it picked something and I didn't. Yep, there it is. Okay, with those selected, I'm just going to backspace them. And that's going to give me a really nasty polygon here. Okay, it doesn't know which way to triangulate, but what it does, show, hopefully, allows me to do is inset this. A certain amount. Now the thing is, is I can't go too far, because if you go too far, and this is just a limitation physically, you start to get things crossing over. But if you get them close, you'll notice that if I don't have this edge in the middle of these kites right here, they look like, shaped like kites, right? Uh, I'm looking at quads. So, take these, collapse them, take these. I should be looking at three verts, by the way. Collapse. So I'm just going to keep that up because there are there are points over here I might accidentally click. If I wanted to be really careful, I could just hit F3 and make sure there was nothing behind it. Okay, and then I can just take these here, backspace those guys out, and that's quads. All right. I can also, if I optimize to there and to there, now I'm thoroughly quads. Yay! So let's take this point here and record its Z position. Okay, and then get these two points, make sure I only got two and record that and then paste it back in. So copy that, two points here, paste that, boom. Okay, and now, here's the other thing though. What I want to do actually is take these faces and da -da -da dump them and I want to record the X position of these guys. Now this is going to be a little hard actually. Let me I can't do that because here's the thing, here's the thing. If I do do that, I have to move these some in the X and a little bit in the Y to keep this planar face right here, okay, this face being planar. So if I go like this, and then you can see that if I look at the top view, you see, I'd have to try to match it like that. I could match the X and the Y though. That could help me pretty pretty tremendously because that's a fixed position so if I if I copy the the X control C let me actually undo that until they're all straight so I'll, I'll take the X here control C and then what I can do is actually select these edges and hold control to get that and I'll paste that there okay now I'll pick the Y which really it's zero and now if I hit 2 it gives me the edges and I can just control click here again so I can swap back and forth and I put the Y at 0. You see how I'm flat again? Okay. Because I needed to do that. And now I can pretty much extrude these and move it however I want. 
me look at the top view here so I can try to match that angle as much as possible like so not going to be perfect or anything like that but this is like inside this is going to be behind the actual bolt so I don't care I just want to dip it in some and it leaves me with faces on the edges here and I just need to delete those Gagon. all right and these are flat so if I look at the X here you can see 0.385 this should be 0.385 as well okay so what I can do is copy that take all these here make sure I got nothing else make them planar in the X which I think is actually going to be Z by the way because of the way this is made and then paste that back in boom okay that puts it right back these edges here I get a little bit of weirdness going on here like these points are kind of kind of craptastic but if I take both of these I might be able to do something like that and there's nothing wrong with that that doesn't hurt anything no, like I said nobody's gonna really see this uh, but I do want some kind of accuracy in here like sort of like you know I don't want to be the the raging douche that doesn't do anything correctly okay so now what I want to do is get these edges because I need to pull these out because once again I need to be able to cap this off properly and again I can't I have to have this kind of bridge I can't do the corner to corner cubic style all right so what I'm going to do temporarily is go over to this guy and copy this guy's X position right here and then we'll click on this guy hit 2 and then control click the verts make sure they're planar in the Z first but they should be and then paste that okay and now what I can do is pretty much attach this guy in there now which means I can now officially grab this guy's Y position boom and those should be pretty much exactly correct alright just gonna hit one control A and tap weld wherever the hell that is on my screen it's up here boom okay weld has a very high um, tolerance compared to my scale so I'm just gonna go point zero one okay you can see it's still weld stuff together alright and now I can bridge that bridge that and I should be free here to cap that probably was a faster way to make this shape but it really is weird like this um, probably would have been faster just to cut a cylinder in half and bring it in but at the same time I w had the requirement of having to explore the shape Right? I had to kind of figure out what the, what the piss is going on here. Um, and given that, I think that it's, it's pretty actually quite accurate. The only major difference is that this edge here and this edge loop here are chamfered. They're quite curved. It's actually a blend. But if I try to do that, it's going to gonna be kind of fart bill uh, it's not gonna really work out that well and it's not gonna make too much of a difference let's just see what we get with a chamfer um, you can see we get some really really nasty stuff going on and it's it's really not that much of a chamfer and I can probably get away with one one here now I need to figure out to see if I can actually get this thing to be quads because I this is no longer a quad and neither are these so this has to come here this has to come here but then I get two points here so if I don't chamfer this edge as well I can't make a can't make a quad out of it if that makes any sense which hopefully it does um, I'll give it a try because why not this is exploring modeling practices so let's see what we can do now for cleaning this guy up right here okay let's see if we can get perfect quads so what I'll do is I'll just grab these verts and hit 
Z so I can kind of zoom in and I like to do this with the optimize tool because I can just kind of freely try stuff okay there is a couple of things going on here number one this is a very planar surface right here okay this whole surface right here is planar so I can officially collapse it all oh, but before I do that I have to make a connection so you have to hold control and then make a connection okay so let's do that we'll go shift and get that guy shift and get that guy control and get that guy now shift and get it and then hold control to go across here and that it's all quads here okay because that's a quad right there and this is a quad right there this is not working out so well yet but these don't need to be like that and that doesn't need to be like that and I believe that's quads this is not working so if I take these and I put them there and then I take that one and connect that it gives me the quad there now I don't know if I'm finished I think I am I can test it though how do you tell if you have quads or anything that's not a quad you go to selection up here and selections kind of hit itself come on down go to faces okay by numeric and we say equals four and then you hit this button select now you'll see that I've got 146 polygons selected and it looks like everything but this and that's pretty much expected so let's see if there's any hope of why is this all show full ribbon that's hiding it right why did this get all bored there we go no it was there come on click it and I guess I gotta wait I think it's a redraw issue yeah it was just a redraw issue alright so let's hold control and go across there go across there go across there okay go back to selection and equals and that looks like the whole model if I hit control again look at it, 150 hit control a 150 click off I get 0 hit control a I get 150 if I say over here uh, less than 4 and I hit this I get 0 and if I say greater than 4 and I hit this I hit 0 okay so I am fully quadded out perfectly which does mean in fact it's probably gonna look like ass I wanna make a statement about that right now but I could subdivide it if I really wanted to okay before I were to do something like that though I would um, take like this ring around all of this here and probably um, give it an extra segment so I don't lose my sharpness the other option is to come here and do like a crease of one like like that just make all these a crease of one just, I'd have to go through and kinda keep double clicking everywhere until I got the whole thing uh, it looks like kind of difficult to see and it went up a little too high as well and that just creased out to one that would be how I do it but I'm not even planning on using the um, nerms for this because ner uh, my my the way I always think about it is I'm uh, do I do I want to subdivide this or do I want to chamfer it and in this case I chamfered it okay to get the round corners I should actually officially get relatively decent lighting results but I don't expect them to be perfect okay it's not the worst I've ever seen in my life uh, some of these faces uh, are getting double blended like so what I would like to do probably is lower my smoothing amount to say maybe 20 
okay that gave me an extra face set of faces but what it does do is it kind of screws me over here so whenever this kind of thing happens and there's like no real balance I'm going to try 30 here okay that keeps all of this stuff but it's losing it here you can see it didn't know to bridge that but it does keep this face off of its own thing but when it gets like this I'm just like the hell with it I'm gonna clear on I'm just gonna set everything on channel 1 and then what I tend to do is something like this where I kinda go okay I just wanna get get this on channel 2 okay and then I usually just kinda go through and every other every other set of faces I I take them off Okay, I'll put those on three, and I'll put that on. Uh, I can't use one. Well, actually, I can use one. Wait, what is one? That's one as well. Um, what is this one? That one's two. So, and what's this? Two, and then these are three. So to be honest, I'm kind of like there's like a three-way connection here, and I'm already using one, two, three. So I'm just gonna hit four to be safe. Okay. And there's nothing I can really do about this unless I want to smooth this over because this is one and this is one. But this one can actually be on one and three. Okay. But you see how it gets kind of weird right here? Like that's a little weird. You yeah. know? So I think I'd probably rather eat it like that. This face here here not being planar is causing me issues so it's almost like I just want to say you know what screw that see how I get that flat now and I get a hard edge there but I do get a bit of a doofy kind of look right here um, and there's not a ton I can do about it uh, once it's painted and, and whatnot, if I did a normal map or something on it, it would look okay. But again, the other option is to, let's say, select my smoothing group of two. Okay, and hit Control i And just say, the hell with it. And just let that all be one piece. Okay. But I don't, I honestly don't like that. I like it. I like it better like this, I think. I do think that this ring, though, let's say it have four so I can see where I need to click. Shift click here, um, minus that, and that, and anything over there. I do believe this, this is group one. This is group one. Okay, I don't need this. So I'm going to stick this edge on two so it sharpens that. I'm going to take that and grow it one time to get the edge. And I don't want these side faces here. And I'm going to stick those on four. You know what? The hell with it. I know I don't have five, so I'm just going to use five. And that separates that clean. There is no real edge there. But now, the only thing I have left to do is do what I originally had done and flatten that out, because that's how it is. Let me hide the, um, I'm just going to hide the background, the reference. Just turn off the old uh, light bulb there. I am on Max 2015, by the way. Okay, so what's left? Um, that's actually pretty much about right. Let's go.
goes into about there. And actually, before it does that, though, it insets. Not a lot. Should probably fix my scale at some point here. Okay. I'm going to move that back just a hair and extrude it again. I'm just going to hit F4 so I can see where my segments are. To there. And then what, what's actually happening is there's a piece. It's actually this piece here. Not bevel, not bevel. I want to extrude. I'm going to go by zero. And then just pull that out like so. Okay, there's like some kind of locking thingy. And it's actually, it comes out pretty far. In fact, it comes out to the height of this guy. And sometimes I use my actual viewport as a measuring device, by the way. Notice how I'm, I'm trying to match, see this point here? I'm trying to match that to here, okay? So I'll just move this up. What I'm going to do is I'm going to move it till it's at the base of my viewport, and that's kind of like a ruler. There's nothing wrong with doing that. Okay, you just use everything you got. And that's pretty much about that. Um, there is like a nick thing that comes stick, you know, out of here and whatnot, but I'm not even worried about that. All right, so now what I want to do is just uh, I, do I have another segment? I do have one more segment that I'm not using. So let's get this guy over to here. And what it actually does is it doesn't start all the way, so I need one more segment. Let's go ahead and isolate again. So I'm going to connect one more segment. I'm going to bring that over to here because now I need to make the pin. All right. And I'm almost out of time here, but I'm almost done. And it actually, looking at that, it comes out pretty much at this angle here. Okay, I have this thing rotated incorrectly versus the, we the, the weapon here because when it's sticking down, this piece kind of lines up with the top of the gun. So the whole thing is going to get rotated 90. Um, so you know what, I might as well do that now. What I'm going to do is rotate based on not the selection center because that's going to move my rotation axis over to the side. I actually want to use the pivot point of this thing. So I'm going to tell it to pick that guy and then use that s selection there. So now if I rotate 90, I don't screw up my axis. Okay. Now, the whole thing is probably actually a little bit fatter than I have it. Um, which means because it, it aligns, when the pin is in, it kind of aligns perfectly with the weapon. Do you see how this curve matches the downward curve of the rifle? I knew there was a reason for that. So, let's see if I go by the same cylinder and I use that object selection. Let's just see what breaks if I do a non-uniform scale here. That's actually about right. I'm going to pause it and put the pin in the gun. Uh oh, it's danger zone. Don't have any bullets. All right, looking at it, to be honest, um, the barrel is like a lot more sunk into the weapon than I have it. It's more like, oops, not by local, just by view. It's actually like this, and it goes, it's back a little bit more because it runs down the length like that some. It's really, quite honestly, more like that. Which means I probably need to adjust a little bit of, you know, the points here that are wrapping around the stuff. Um, but that's about what it does. And this off angle here, even though, like, if you were to ask me, that's like a mistake, I would, like, be like, eh, I don't like that. That's actually, like, really what my gun has. It's kind of like the manufacturers sucked at doing what they do best, which would be manufacturing. So, yeah, I'm going to keep it. All right, but it does give me a good ability to say, uh, if I take this guy, now I can kind of align the bolt here. Now with that, like that, it's actually, I want to say, I actually want to say that it's these faces here, 
extrude that and now this time I actually want to give it some extrusion because I need it to come out um, and I remember like what I said before is there's a channel cut here okay there really is and the bolts pretty round like this is not a it's not a cube it's 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 pretty basically round but um, it is a good marker for me and what it does is actually allows me to, to fix up some of this other stuff here for instance oh, that's on edge isn't it yes it is that ties in a little bit closer like that and actually I'm gonna go ahead and say that it's equidistant from the back to the front meaning the distance between this edge here and the start of the bolt is gonna be matching this here Roughly, I don't give really too many squats if it's not exact. All right, so I also my breech here is actually too breechy. It's too. Uh, it pretty much goes exactly to the bottom of the 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 piece of of stock here. So, by the way, I know I keep calling this a pin. And I know it's a bolt. I just it's easier for me to say pin because it's got the pin in it. Um, so again, I'm gonna have to cut the channel out of the plastic here. That's not that big of a deal. Uh, this is actually right. There is actually a flat point on the barrel here, by the way. It actually flattens out like that, where you can kind of stick your thumb on there, and that's really I'm looking at it right here. I got my finger on it. It, it's that's what it is so I'm gonna have to adjust the plastic like I said to fit around some of this stuff a little bit better uh, the barrel to be honest uh, can be a little bit less wide without any issues and that will actually help solve several problems number one the barrel being too frickin wide or too uh, thick because it ain't that thick it's about like that I really do feel like this is so long it's stupid. This is supposed to match the length of the bullet, but then again, thinking about it. How, how much? Okay, so from the trigger to the f end of the gun, it's two thirds, and the trigger is starting right here. So the trigger to the end of the gun. Yeah, yeah, no, it's actually right. That's right. It feels really long though. May not be long, but it sure is thin. No, it it yeah, it doesn't feel right, but it is. I'm looking at it right here. That is correct. It's, it's, uh, I I'm zoomed up in on it, like I'm thinking, oh my god, that's the longest bullet I've ever seen. But you, you actually gotta look at it like this, you know, from far away. These are thirty odd six bullets. They're friggin' huge. They really are. Um, I mean, they're no, they're not like twenty millimeter shells or anything, but they're they're big bullets. Um, I actually reload them, you know, which is kind of fun, but then kind of back back aching. Alright, so I need to stop at this point, but I'm on a good good pace here to get everything correct. The bolt looks good, uh, to be honest. Um, at this point I can actually attach this to here. And you can see that now I can, you know, pull it out. Pull it out like that. Um, by the way, this this piece here doesn't... You, you notice how like if I rotate this, that's gonna break? Uh, in reality, it doesn't actually. It's by doing this. It's actually when you pull it back, then you pull it back, and they stay together. This doesn't. Um, this locks this thing, uh, and then that's what causes the that that by doing that, that's what actually pulls the pin back. If that makes any sense. The mechanism is actually in here. It's it's like I said. You can take these things apart. This is actually a hollow tube, and it's got stuff inside of it, going all the way through. Bolts aren't just you know. There's just a you know a metal rod. There's stuff in them, and it's the action against this thing, the the turning against this thing that cocks the the pin in the bolt. If that makes any sense, um, in theory anyway. But I do know that when I uh, when I pull this up, that piece does not go with it. Okay, it's 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 got a pivot in there. So I'm going to keep it like that and be happy with it and just be like, hey, you know what? I got the thing sitting on my lap. I know what it looks like. I'm not at 100% though. 
accurate on it on any of this on any of it to be honest with you the thickness of this uh this but then again i'm not you can't be accurate on anything because if you think about it um just the simple fact that this is 18 segments in reality so i've got 18 segments going around this cylinder right what's the reality of how many segments are going around is it one billion or is it 10 trillion or is it you know infinite right it's infinite how many like molecules are going around here there's zillions of them to make that how smooth and round and perfectly round it is so if you think about it you're never going to be perfectly accurate in anything so you always got to give yourself a break i know i do because um i'm a lazy bastard all right so i do feel like however that that is not as deep as i am depicting which means this needs to come back it's actually a little bit more of a shallow change in thickness here and that's it I'm calling it here hopefully you guys are enjoying it it's coming along it's looking like a rifle really at this point if I just added a trigger I could be done for a mobile game in fact I'm too high for a mobile game um, already like I've already given it more detail than it deserves for those devices I would actually have to knock that off and it would be more like this and I'd have to fix some lighting and probably maybe run a chamfer or two instead of smoothing it like I am um, but I'm gonna go with the nerves because I think it's gonna look better and it's really not gonna be that many polygons total I mean I'm at with everything selected I'm at 2766 like I said I got I got a clean and easy 10,000 budget I ain't, I ain't even scared I ain't scared there's no problem so far so looking good looking good um, that's a little far forward but anyways yeah I need to end the part because we're over an hour so thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next part